What's up everybody, Rob here from the Basement Bike Shop and in this video I'm going to go over how I install BMX mid bottom brackets. Now I've covered different techniques for installing mid bottom brackets in a couple different videos. I'm going to try and condense that all into one and add some stuff I feel that I left out. So let's get started. So opening the box, it contains the two mid bearings. the cone spacers and drills of dust covers, the center spindle spacer, and some other micro spacers. Ooh, and a sticker. Now remember, mid refers to the outside diameter of the bearing. So the different sizes they come in is for the inside diameter, which is whatever spindle size you have on your crank, whether it's 19, 22, 24 millimeter. So this is your center spacer. A lot of times it has to be cut down to the perfect size for your frame. And I'll show you how to measure that. This one is 51 millimeter and it comes with a line at 49 millimeter to make it easier for cutting. To see what size your frame needs, you're going to measure between the two ridges inside the bottom bracket housing. Those are your bearing races. And how I do that is I take some sort of measuring tool. I'm using my ruler because my caliper won't fit. And then I take my center spacer and I mark that measurement. If it's a black center spacer, I'll usually take like a pick and I'll etch it in. And I do it all the way around it. And then I take it over to my bench vise. Now I used to use a pipe cutter to do this, but I found that after I used the pipe cutter, I had to file the inside for an excessive amount of time. And even though I have to do a lot of filing on the end of this one, I feel like it's easier and I still get good results when it comes to straightness, as long as you follow this technique. Now I only cut part way through and then I'll actually rotate it and then cut part way through again on the line and then rotate it and then continue to do that. If you try to cut all the way through from one side to the other, I guarantee it's going to be at an angle and then it's not going to sit against your bearing evenly. So then once you cut it all the way through, the end will be a little bit jagged and we'll go in and do some filing. Now you still have to do a little bit of filing on the inside, but I feel like a lot less than you would if you did it with a pipe cutter. And then we're just going to sand the end flat, take any ridges off of it, get it smooth and flat so it sits against the bearing evenly. And then before we install it, I like to take the crank that I'm installing this on and just make sure that the spindle slides through the spacer. And then we're ready to install it. Now when it comes to installing bearings and a cup press or a bearing press is not available, which most people don't have one, there's two techniques I like to use for putting in bearings. The first is the bench vise technique and the second is a good old fashioned hammer and a chunk of 2 by 4 You can also use this method with the rob brace and I'll show you that too. So to get started with the bench vise technique, we're going to prep the vise by taking two chunks of plywood that I cut and rubber banding them to the jaws. This will make sure that we don't damage the bearing when we push it in. Then we'll take the frame and one bearing and put it to the center of the bearing is about in the center of the plywood 
and make sure that the rear triangle of the frame is clear of the jaws. Then you're just going to slowly push it in, watching the bearing to make sure it goes in straight. If it starts to go in crooked, you can adjust it to the high side of the bearing and push it back straight. And once we get it all the way in, Put your center spacer in. I forgot to do that once. Got the crank all on, fully assembled, had to take it all back apart. I never did it after that. I also put a little bit of grease on the outside of these bearings, just so that if I ever have to remove them again, they'll come out fairly easy. Then we push the second bearing in. Slowly watching to make sure that it goes in straight. Now you can see it goes in crooked. So I loosen it up, I put it on the high side, and I push the bearing back straight. And put it back in the center. And push it all the way in. Now, after we get them in, they still have to go a little bit further to get to the race. So I'll take the plywood off one side and put a chunk of two by four in. And the frame will actually sink into the two by four while it pushes the bearing the rest of the way in. And I'll do this to each side. And now your bottom bracket is installed using a bench vise. Now this is by far my favorite way to install bottom brackets. But when a bench vise is not available, then we use the hammer and two by four technique. Now to do this, I like to turn the bike upside down, prop up the seat if I have to. And I also put on some hard shell knee pads so I can brace the frame without damaging the frame or my knees. Start off by putting a little bit of grease where the bearing is going to sit, or you can put it on the outside of the bearing. Then we'll take the first bearing and I'll just tap it so it stays, so I don't have to hold it. Just get one little corner started. I'll put my knees up against the frame. And I'll take a chunk of two by four and just hit the bearing in. Look at it every so often to make sure it's going in straight. In case you have to put pressure on a lower or upper side, straighten it back out. Then we turn the frame around or you can move to the other side. Put our center spacer in. We'll put a little bit of grease on the bearing race again. And then put this bearing in the same way we put the other one in. Get it started a little bit so it stays. Take a chunk of two by four and hit the bearing the rest of the way in. Now I usually don't put bottom brackets in exactly like this when I don't have a bench vise. I use a rod brace. And if you have a concrete wall or a block wall, then it's actually much easier than putting knee pads on and hitting it against your own knees. 
I start out by stacking stuff up underneath where the rod brace is going to go to get it to the perfect height of either the cup or the bearing or the three-piece crank arm depending on what I'm installing. This way I'm not putting pressure on the rest of the frame, just on the bottom bracket housing. This will ensure that as I hit it with a hammer, I'm not gonna bend the frame. Here I'm using it to put one piece crank cups into an American bottom bracket. But the method is exactly the same, whether you're installing unsealed cups or mid sealed bearings and even crank arms and spindles for 48 spline three-piece cranks. Here I'm using it to push the spindle further into the right arm. So whether you're using a bench vise or the hammer and block of wood, or if you want to try out the rod brace if you have a cement or block wall, I hope I was able to help you with your project. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll keep these videos coming. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, you can leave a comment below or you can send me an email. Thanks for watching.